Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, a worldwide recall affects a popular hybrid. Then why California's future may not look so green. And a rare plant found and what that means for the city. Plus, find out about a local resident serving up coffee on the go. These stories are much more just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. Gas prices continue to spike throughout Southern California, and experts say it may not be slowing down. With the average price at over $4 per gallon, the high gas rates are having an effect on Southern California drivers. Average prices in Torrance are around $4.25 a gallon. Prices jumped more than 50 cents in one week throughout Los Angeles County, with prices well over $5 in parts of Los Angeles. Experts expect prices to rise another 10 to 25 cents before dropping. While the ExxonMobil refinery explosion months ago may have had an effect, other experts say there's no, just no explanation. State Attorney General Kamala Harris is looking into the issue. While we're worried about the amount of water being used, we should also be aware of the quality. A new study found that nearly one-fifth of groundwater used for public drinking water systems in California contain excess amounts of potentially toxic contaminants. These include toxins like arsenic to uranium, which occurs naturally but can lead to a higher risk of kidney disease and cancer if high levels are consumed long-term. The decade-long study looked at 11,000 public supply wells throughout the state, while some public water systems are required to bring down the contaminants to acceptable levels before supplying to the public. Several million Californians rely on public water systems that bring the raw water without any filters. The study also found that pollutants from farms draining into underground water aquifers were also having an effect. About one third of the state's drinking water comes from groundwater and public supply wells. More California drivers are getting into a dangerous habit. One in 10 drivers admitted to texting, calling, or using their phones this year, nearly a 40% increase from last year. But according to the study by the state's Office of Traffic Safety, that percentage is probably much higher. Closer to one in five drivers because not all phone use is easily visible. Researchers took a tally by peering into passing cars. Experts say the growth in phone usage and addiction to technology plays a part, but it's not only teenagers that are adding to the statistic. In addition to texting and browsing web pages, using GPS maps was high on the list of activities. In California, an estimated 300 to 400 people die each year in accidents caused by distracted drivers using their phone. A controversial law is now cleared to begin gathering signatures for appeal. Just weeks after Governor Jerry Brown signed the state's new mandatory vaccination law into effect, opponents are collecting signatures to repeal it. The law faced opposition with rallies at the state capitol. In order for the initiative to appear on the 2016 ballot, a minimum of 366,000 signatures will be needed. Green lawns may now be a thing of the past. Governor Jerry Brown signed into effect a bill that protects homeowners cities, counties, and agencies from fees against Brown laws. The measure, started by Assemblywoman Cheryl Brown, who represents San Bernardino County, prohibits local government from issuing fines for violating lawn maintenance. Before the state was in drought, in a drought, city officials imposed fines on homeowners for not maintaining lawns. Governor Brown hopes the law will protect homeowners who are trying to conserve water. And now the state is looking to regulate the future of lawns. The California Water Commission is considering new rules to cut the amount of water that can be used for landscapes in newly built homes, businesses, and schools. If approved, the changes could take effect by December 1st, drastically changing how homes in California will look. The new state regulations would limit lawn space to 25% of the home's landscape area. Drought-tolerant plants can be used to fill up the remaining space. Under this new ordinance, grass would be banned in landscapes of commercial, industrial, and institutional buildings. Residents have been trading in their lawns in record numbers. Recently, the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California announced they had given out more than $300 million in turf removal rebate funds. Another company is under investigation for faulty airbags. U.S. safety regulators are now examining inflators made by Arc Automotive, Inc. The inflators went into more than 400,000 Fiats, Chrysler Town, and Country minivans, 
as well as 70,000 Kia Optima midsize sedans. The investigation comes after a complaint to the safety agency in December of 2009. The incident involved a driver's side inflator in a Chrysler minivan. This was followed by a lawsuit involving the same part in a 2004 Optima. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is looking into how many affected parts are on the road. All involved companies are complying with the NHTSA investigation. In more car troubles, a popular car brand recently issued a worldwide recall. Toyota announced there may be a software glitch in their Prius, which could cause the hybrid system to shut down while on the road. This recall affects 625,000 vehicles around the globe, including over 100,000 of the 2012 to 2014 Prius V. The current software for the motor and hybrid control can cause high heat to develop around the transistors and damage them. Now, if this happens, lights would pop up on the dashboard warning drivers. But in some cases, the problem leads to a failure of the hybrid system. Toyota's hybrid has had two other recalls in the U.S. this past year. The company is contacting owners in the U.S. to schedule repairs. To see if your car qualifies, you can check with your vehicle identification number at safercar.gov slash VIN. New polls show many Californians are unaware of a beneficial program. The in-home supportive services program says or pays family members and caregivers $11 an hour to aid the elderly. This allows low-income senior citizens and disabled residents to be able to stay at home rather than move to a nursing home. A poll by the Associated Press Center for Public Affairs Research found that less than one-third of Californians age 40 and over have heard of the program, which has been in place since the 50s. This is targeted towards low-income residents. Participants generally have a monthly income of $877 or less and no more than $2,000 in assets. The elderly or disabled participants are able to select and hire who provides their care, including family members and friends. Caregivers must take an orientation class and pass a criminal background check. The survey was conducted among a random sample of 1,735 adults age 40 or older. To read more about the topic, visit longtermcarepoll.org. A large auto company with U.S. headquarters in Torrance was fined with a heavy fee. Honda will pay $25 million to settle claims it discriminated against minority customers by charging them more for auto loans than white customers. In doing so, the company violated fair lending laws by charging higher interest rates on loans by black, Hispanic, and Asian borrowers. The Department of Justice found that for the past four years, the average black loaner paid about $250 more than a white borrower, and Hispanics paid $200 more while Asian and Pacific Islanders paid $150 more. $24 million will go towards payments for past conduct, while $1 million will go towards creating consumer financial education programs for the populations that were overcharged. The company released a statement that they strongly oppose any form of discrimination and believe in the importance of fair lending. And a popular ride app is also facing steep fines. Uber, the private car, or rideshare company is being fined $7.3 million by a court in California for withholding information about its business practices. The report found that Uber was not filing all required reports, including causes of accidents and how often it provided disabled accessible vehicles. While Uber has enjoyed popularity in some cities, it has also faced a number of lawsuits and protests in European countries. Last month, hundreds of French taxi drivers took to the streets in protest against Uber, blocking access to major airports and train stations. This month, Uber suspended its Uber Pop service in France following the riots. The company has 30 days to pay the fine or lose its license to operate in the state of California, where they are headquartered. They also have the option to file an appeal. A popular fast food chain is making itself even more accessible. Taco Bell teamed up with DoorDash, an on-demand service that delivers food from a variety of popular restaurants. There's a set delivery fee depending on your, older, on your order and the location of the restaurant. Customers can order via the DoorDash website or app, and the order will be delivered in 45 minutes or less. Currently, the Taco Bell delivery service is available in select cities around Los Angeles, including Torrance. Amazon celebrated its 20th birthday with a major shopping event, a one-day online shopathon called Prime Day. The company promised a global shopping event with more deals than Black Friday, specifically for Amazon Prime customers. 
Uh, some of the most popular sales included a 40-inch TV for $115, 70% savings on top kitchen brands, and over 50% off to Nikon Coolpix cameras. New deals happened throughout the day called lightning deals, but there was some mixed feedback along with the popular products for sale like Kindles and headphones were mostly dated items like a chef's work hat offered at a discounted price of $4.65 from its original $14.99. Other random products included a beard grower, a muzzle for your dog. While the event itself may not have been received with the best feedback, the sale did bring Amazon shares up 2.5%, a record high for the company. A supermarket chain that hoped to expand in California isn't receiving the warm welcome they had hoped. Hagen Inc. recently opened several locations throughout Southern California, including one right here in Torrance. But the grocery chain is already laying off employees and cutting hours. The Pacific Northwest chain bought 83 grocery stores throughout California this year and spent the last few months converting them to the Hagen brand, promising more higher quality products and low prices. Now the chain faces stiff competition from expanding farmers markets, smaller chains like Trader Joe's and big retailers like Walmart and Target adding more grocery products. Online sites like Google and Amazon have also been expanding their grocery delivery services. The company, which currently has about 10,000 employees, did not specify how many workers would be affected. Well, still ahead, find out why bringing your lunch in plastic containers may be dangerous for your health. The We help you help. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for information on how to provide even better care for the person who wants to care of you. Welcome back. After months of waiting, a highly anticipated novel was finally released. Harper Lee, the author of the classic To Kill a Mockingbird, released her second novel titled Go Set a Watchman. The novel was a bestseller before it was even published, ranking number one on Amazon's bestseller list from pre-orders. It's the most popular pre-order since the last Harry Potter book, which came out in 2007. The novel takes place in the 1950s, 20 years after the end of her first novel. The author's hometown of Monroeville, Alabama, where to Kill a Mockingbird is based, planned a full day of celebrations on the day of release, including a reading, tours, and a cocktail hour outside the courthouse. You can purchase your very own copy at the Barnes & Noble on Hawthorne Boulevard here in Torrance, which has plenty of copies. The book is priced at $27.99 for a hardback, but is having a 30% off promotional sale. One local businesswoman caught the eye of Forbes magazine, making its first ever list of the nation's most successful women. The list recognizes the country's top 50 most successful women measured by their net worth. Coming in at number 24, business entrepreneur and leader Janice Bryant Howard was recognized for her work with Act One Group located in Torrance. Act One is an agency that provides opportunities for those looking for employment. Howard was also recently featured on the Today Show to talk about her success. Howard is on the list alongside Oprah Winfrey and Beyonce. A seriously endangered plant was found at an unlikely site in Torrance, and now the city is seeking a grant to protect it. The Southern Tar plant was discovered at the soon-to-be regional transit center. Now the two acres where the where plant was found will be set aside to preserve it. And in order to make that happen, the city needs a $500,000 state grant to build a fenced area. The funds will go towards creating and maintaining the preserved area, as well as signs for educational purposes. Now, if the grant is approved, the money will come out of the highway users tax. There is some controversy about this preserve as local critics suggest relocating the plant to Madrona Marsh. However, the moving the plant is not so simple because the tar plant plays a unique ecological role within its natural environment. The regional transit center is scheduled to break ground later this summer. Another way the state is finding new ways to save water, state park officials ordered that 
Outdoor showers be shut off at 38 state beaches throughout Southern California by July 15th. According to Carol Baker, a representative from the County of Los Angeles Department of Harbors and Beaches, there are no plans to turn off the showers at Torrance Beach, but the department has already taken steps toward making the beach as water-wise as possible. The beach showers have automatic shutoffs and low-flow aerators, and they're currently assessing how to achieve the biggest water savings with changes like automatic shutoff faucets and wireless urinals. And if you haven't made your way over to the mall recently, they're also taking some big steps to save water. New renovations include planting California native and drought tolerant plants, installing drip irrigation systems, and renovating restrooms with water efficient options. The combined efforts have made a big difference, saving the city 26% in May. Police officers aren't the only ones who need bulletproof vests. Torrance Police Department dog Nemo recently received a life-saving gift. Bishop Montgomery High School teacher Judy Klein and her students raised $900 for the vest. Canine Armor is an organization that provides custom-fit bulletproof vests for California law enforcement dogs. Now, each vest is made with the same material used for police officers. The vest protects their vital organs and provides them with added safety while on duty. And another Torrance Police dog, Nico, is also a need of a vest and hopes to get one very soon with the help of donations. For, for more information or if you would like to donate to K9 Armor, visit k-9armor.com. There's a new mobile business in town and it's serving a breakfast staple. Atomic Cafe Mobile is a mobile coffee truck that serves premium espresso coffee as well as blended drinks and beverages. The truck is owned and managed by Torrance resident and big coffee fan Sean Conniff who uses all organic beans from free trade farms in South and Central America. Conniff combined his savings, loans, and $5,000 raised from a Kickstarter campaign to launch his mobile coffee truck business. Atomic Cafe operates out of a white truck fully equipped with all the essentials, a custom espresso machine, coffee grinder, and rinsing tools. The future goal is to expand to a coffee shop next summer. You can find the mobile coffee truck on Wednesdays from 4 to 8 p.m. at the Playa Vista Farmers Market. For more information, visit AtomicCafeMobile.com. The South Bay Lexus Service Center is home to some new artwork hosting a fine art show for the second year in a row. The annual event brings local artists and the community together. Guests listen to live music as they browse through 237 unique works of art, including an eye-catching epoxy resin piece as well as oil and watercolor paintings. And it was a special moment as chair members were recognized for their hard work throughout the year. With 144 members, the Torrance Artists Guild is the only art group chartered by the city and it hopes to bring art awareness to South Bay communities with events like these. The show will run through August 14th and 25% of the proceeds will go towards the Schweitzer Learning Center, a nonprofit special education school right here in Torrance. Finding a job can be difficult, but look no more. Our reporter Tao Ta takes us to the opening of a new career center where for some people it can lead them to their first job. It's the start of a new beginning. But this one-stop center will be a place where people can come and get the tools to start laying the foundation for their success. And that's the most important thing. Mayor Fury, along with council members, came to celebrate a new partnership with the South Bay Workforce Investment Board and the improved South Bay One-Stop Business and Career Center in Torrance. For many, the grand opening came at just the right time. Over the last few years with the recession, there's been a lot of occasions for retraining of positions. So somebody loses their job and the Workforce Investment Board works with them on a hand on a uh, hand, on hand uh, teaching them how to apply for a new job and how to acquire those uh, skill sets that they have. They even have uh, workshops where they teach them uh, those skills. So it's a great partnership. For more than 30 years, the South Bay Workforce has provided employment and training services for LA's South Bay area, and they're still going. As of July 1st, the South Bay Workforce Investment Board hopes to offer free services and training programs for businesses and residents that hope to be that one step closer to finding a job. Residents, uh, laid off workers, businesses, they're all going to be able to use the services here. And we're going to be able to train people, retrain people, provide youth a curriculum on how to get a job and how to keep a job. Torrance Area Chamber of Commerce President and Chief Executive Officer Donna Dupron shares with us some of the benefits of the new partnership. 
The one thing that we found out already is the resources that are available to nonprofit organizations through them, as well as different resources for economic development. The Workforce Services of 11 cities and now includes downtown Old Torrance. Wherever we go, uh, our employment force, they need people, and they need people who are trained and people who are available to do the job, and that's what the Workforce Investment Board does. The new career center opening for the city of Torrance is a huge milestone. Now people can come to get the services, training programs, and help they need to be on the road to success. Reporting for Torrance City Cable, this is Tao Ta. Thanks, Tao. For more information on how to get started at the One Stop Center in Torrance, visit sbwib.org. A new study hopes to predict which students will struggle to read. Researchers at Northwestern University studied the brain waves of 112 children between ages 3 and 14 to help identify who is more likely to have trouble with reading development. Published in the PLOS Biology Journal, the study found that the key factor is how the brain deciphers speech when it's noisy. Preschoolers who can match sounds to letters earlier are able to read easily. The study used an EEG to measure how the brain responded to sound as the kids watched a video. Researchers then developed a model to predict children's reading performance and conducted a series of experiments. The test accurately predicted how well the children did on literary tests. A year later, the study is part of a larger effort to find ways to spot problems early on and help children with reading disabilities. Microwaving those leftovers may be a quick fix, but that may not be the best idea for your health. Heating up food in certain plastic containers releases toxic chemicals into our food, leading to a range, to a range of health problems. In a new study published by the American Heart Association, some of the toxins released were linked to higher blood pressure and an insulin resistance, two major factors in diabetes. Even when unheated, the chemicals are able to enter the body in small doses, the research team looked at two compounds found in plastic through urine samples in children and teenagers. The result, researchers found a significant association between high blood pressure and levels of phthalate, a chemical used to soften plastic. In order to decrease your risk, here are some tips. Avoid using plastic containers or plastic wraps when microwaving food. Avoid washing plastic containers in dishwashers. When purchasing plastics, look for the number inside the recyclable symbol and avoid ones labeled three, six, and seven. An alternate option to plastics is using glass or paper products. When we come back, some upcoming events you won't want to. You can't buy a best friend. You can love them, pet them, care for them, whether they want you to or not. You can take a picture or 50. You can bring them with you wherever you go. You can jump, yell, hide and go seek, play dress up, or not. Go for a walk, or not. You can fly to the moon, travel the world, or just stay in bed. You can't buy a best friend like that. But you can adopt one. Cause we Welcome back, everybody. The city is holding its first public community planning and design committee meeting to discuss the potential of creating a historic preservation program. The adoption of a preservation program could have an effect on property values, so come out to participate in the process. The meeting will be held on July 30th from 7 to 9 p.m. at the City of Torrance Council Chambers. And come out for a free concert featuring Mystic Wave on Sunday, August 2nd from 3 to 5 p.m. The concert takes place at Columbia Park on the east side near the corner of 190th Street and Prairie Avenue. Mystic Wave is a community outreach band associated with Soka Kakai International, the Buddhist Association for Peace, Culture, and Education. 
Well, that does it for us on this week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. And I'm Jin Chen. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time.